This is the final in-ear monitor I will review on this channel. Sorry, did I say the final? I meant a final. This here is the E2000 from a company called Final Audio. It's definitely not the last one I'm gonna review on this channel, but I was interested in this one for one particular reason, and it's the size, it's the form factor of this unit. I've previously sampled a different headphone that's very similar to this in form factor, and that is the Zero Carbo Tenore. And I think that headphone sounds really good, but also like, I just love the way it fits. It's super small in the ear, doesn't take up a lot of space. And I need that space, right? So when I saw the final audio, I was immediately interested in checking it out. That said, I, I, don't, I don't really know what it sounds like. I don't know if this is a good sound. This is a single dynamic driver in a very small aluminum housing. So I don't, I don't really know what to expect. So let's go ahead and open it up give it a listening test, I'll run it against my reference library of music, and then I'll come back and I'll let you know, is the final E2000 any good? All right, so we got the final E2000 here in a box. Let's look around it and see what we can find out before we crack it open. Uh, looking here on the front, well, let's see. They do have the high-res badge on them, which means almost nothing. If you're a big fan of high-res audio, and frankly, a lot of this channel started out with me reviewing the Sony Walkman for its high fineness. If you're really into that, uh, I think it's worth doing a little bit of research. Uh, a channel here on YouTube called Walkman Likes a Thing, he did a really good breakdown of high-res audio. Anyway, they claim to be hi-fi earphones. They indicate that they have a dynamic driver, which is what I understand. Um, they also do have some information here about the housing, which is aluminum. So I don't, the, it's a bit of a spoiler, right? I was hoping to open these up and be surprised that they're aluminum, but I know that just based on the box. Looking around here on the back, half of this is in Japanese. Um, unfortunately, I do not read Japanese. If you do, let me know if that says anything that I don't know. But uh, this is just kind of describing the way it feels. Fits. Um, again, describing the dynamic driver, aluminum housing, 1.2 meter cord, a non-replaceable cord, which is worth pointing out. Okay, so most of the other inner monitors I've been listening to, even similar prices have had replaceable cords. The E2000 does not. Uh, list of items in the package. Wow, man, talk about spoilers. Let's see what it says. It says it's got the main unit, the ear pieces, ear hooks, and a pouch. Huh. One thing worth calling out real quick is that there is a very similar item from Final called the E3000. This is the E2000, there's a 3000 as well, which looks like a very similar product. Um, the one thing that stands out that's very different is that the metal housing is stainless steel rather than aluminum. And that gives it kind of a cool glossy steel, almost a chrome look. That one's only like 10 bucks more. And you might be wondering why I didn't get the E3000. Why did I get the E2000 instead? And two reasons. One, I actually like the black look better, um, which is pretty, that's pretty superficial, okay. Uh, and then the other one, this is a little bit less superficial, but just based on reading around what to expect from these earphones, it sounded like the E3000 was a little bit more on the bassy side and the less bright, and that this is a little bit brighter. Now I don't know how bright this is to start with. Maybe this is gonna be too bright, I don't know. Um, but just based on what people were describing, it sounded like the E2000 was gonna be more up my alley. All right, well, that's about as much as we can find out about this earphone without opening it up. So let's go ahead and crack it open. Ooh, that is not even close to leather. All right, so we got the final E2000 fully out of the box and spread out for your observation. Um, what do we get in the box? Well, we get the largest warranty card I've seen in a while. That is a lot of paperwork, which 
Well, it's got a it's got a plug at the end of it, so I don't think I need any instructions. It does come with a little carrying pouch, which kind of looks like leather, kind of vaguely looks like leather, but man, this thing is not even close to leather. I gave it the smell test, but that was really just a courtesy. I don't this there was no need to smell this to know that that is not actual real leather. Uh, you do get a plethora of ear tips. You get one, two, three, four and five different sizes of ear tips. That's actually really cool. Most of the times you get three, right? You get a large, a medium, and a small. And if you happen to fit somewhere in the middle, you're kind of screwed. This has got five different sets, which are, I think they're different sizes. Yeah, these are all different sizes and they're all subtly different sizes. So if you need something that is slightly bigger or slightly smaller, well, you're in luck. And then the ear tips actually have these color coded cores which will help you match them up you do also get a pair of hooks which ostensibly you could install here and i think this is the type of earbud that you could wear either hanging down from your ear or you could wrap it around the top of your ear and wear it over ear and i think you know having these hooks pre-installed might make it a little bit easier to wear it over ear but frankly like i don't know i I'm not yet convinced that hooks are necessary. I'm not, I'm not so sure I need these things in my in-ear monitors, even if I'm wearing them over the ear. Then of course you do get the headphone itself, which is, as I suggested earlier, it's attached to the cable. There's no removing it from the cable. Um, that's a little bit of a bummer, but I knew that going in. Down here you've got an L-shaped connector, which is not my favorite, but this is a nice small one. Uh, I'm okay with that. Up here you've got the Y connector and you have a chin cinch which is, you know, I don't really use these, but it always seems like a nice touch to have the chin cinch on there. And then you get up here to the buds themselves, and these things are minuscule. These are definitely the smallest in-ear monitors that I own. As promised, they are made of metal. And as promised, they are tiny. Um, looking around, I'm like, it's a pretty handsome bud, even though it's simple. The final logo on there almost looks like something out of Resident Evil. Around the back, you've got the model number printed on it. And then on the bottoms, you've got an L and an R so that you know you're left and right. Otherwise, there's not much difference. I guess you could just keep in mind that the final logo faces forward. Uh, another interesting thing about the final E2000 is the fact that these have what looks like open backs. I don't know if these are actually gonna sound open, but there are definitely metal mesh grills here on the back. When I hook this up to my Walkman, I am going to do some testing to see just how open these actually are. I'm going to see if sound is coming out of them, and I'm gonna try you know, putting my fingers over it and seeing if it adjusts the sound quality. I know I've been doing a lot of in-ear monitors lately, but really the headphones that I love the most are open back on-ear headphones or over-ear headphones. I just love the sound that you get from open headphones, and if these things can give me some of that, well, frankly, I'm not expecting it, uh, but if they can give it to me, I'll be happy to have it. Uh, that's about as much as I can figure out just looking here at the thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the E2000s to my Walkman, run it against my reference library of music, and then, yeah, I'll come back here and I'll let you know what I think. All right, I've been listening to the final audio E2000 quite a bit, and I think this is a really, really good in-ear monitor, especially for the price. It's around 45 bucks. In fact, I think if you're looking at other headphones in this price range, specifically if you're looking at like KZ in-ear monitors for around 45 bucks, frankly, I think you should be looking at the E2000 instead. Okay, I'll actually start with some of the reasons why you might prefer a KZ headphone to the E2000. And those reasons are, I'm gonna say three different reasons why you might prefer. Reason number one is aesthetics or looks, right? That's just the thing that generally people, you find yourself attracted to a particular headphone and sometimes you can't explain it. Sometimes it's just because it looks cool and that's totally cool. Personally, I think the E2000 looks pretty cool, but it's not as flashy as some KZ headphones. Reason number two that you might prefer KZ headphones is that the final audio does not have a replaceable cable. The cable is stuck to the unit. so. If the cable goes bad, you have to replace the entire headphone, which is a bummer, right? Uh, I frankly, like, I wish this cable was replaceable. To get a replaceable cable on the final headphone, you have to spend a lot more money to get their, their upper range models. You know, I think the biggest issue that you might have with this cable is that there is fairly significant microphonics happening when you are wearing these in your ears. And what, what that means is that 
you have these things plugged in your ears. If the cable runs up against your shirt, brushes against a zipper, something like that, the sound of that is gonna get transmitted through the cable and into the bud because there's no like strain relief. There's nothing here trying to dampen that sound. That can happen. That said, you can solve that problem entirely by wearing these things over ear instead of under ear, drop down or straight down or however you wanna describe it. You can solve that microphonics issue entirely. So that is one reason why you might prefer the KZ headphones. That said, I don't really like the cable on the KZs. And then the third reason that you might prefer KZs is that you might prefer the sound signature. Um, I've reviewed a number of them on the channel. They all have different sounds, but typically they have pretty elevated bass and generally fairly sparkly highs. Um, and for a lot of people, you know, that's what you're looking for. I can totally understand that. For me, however, the sound quality of the final audio E2000 beats all of the KZs I've heard. And, and a lot of that comes down to just sound signature and my personal preferences, but also just generally the overall quality of the sound of the E2000 is really good. Uh, if I were to describe the sound, I would say this is actually a little bit bassy. And that's why I, I do compare it to the KZ headphones, right? My f this is not my favorite in-ear monitor at this price range. I still prefer the Tin Hi-Fi T2s, but I think if you're looking at KZs, it's probably because you're into bass and the Tin, the bass is fine on the Tin, but it's not great. The bass on these is a lot more solid. And I think people that are looking at the KZs because they like that bass punch, you might also be satisfied with the final E2000. And then apart from having a pretty solid bass punch, it's just got like a generally pretty well balanced sound. The, the mids are nice and present. They're maybe slightly recessed, but not to the degree that they are on most KZ headphones. And then the highs are a little bit rolled off up at the top, um, which just means that it doesn't ever get like piercing or sibilant. Um, that's an issue I have with a lot of KZ headphones is that they are sibilant, which is, it's not my favorite thing in sound, frankly. Um, and, you know, it does sometimes come at the expense, you know, you get that sibilance and you also get like a, a lively, energetic, exciting headphone. And this is maybe slightly missing some of that energy. Again, like I think the T2 does it better, but for me, like the, the highs on these are better than the KZ headphones, at least all the ones that I've heard so far. So yeah, generally I would just say the sound is pretty nice and balanced with a nice bass bump and pretty good mids and pretty good highs. Like it's just a really pleasant, delicate, is that a good word to say it? I think that's a word they use in their marketing speak, so I'm not gonna use that. Don't, never mind. I didn't say delicate, but they do kind of sound delicate. And then apart from the sound, the form factor is really what I love about the E2000. These buds are so small, especially compared to a lot of the KZ buds I've been listening to that, you know, they all fit in my ears mostly, some of them, Okay, never mind. Some of them don't fit in my ears that well. They fit really deep. The comfort level on the KZs is a little bit all over the place, and some of them are pretty good, don't get me wrong. But the comfort on these is probably the best of any in-ear monitor I've tried so far. And that's just because of how small it is. So the small size, it fits, plugs into the ear, super, super easy, no fuss. There's no issue with it wiggling itself out over time. I don't know, what more is there to say about the fit? It's a small cylinder that plugs into the side of your ear and it's comfortable, it fits, it doesn't fall out. I approve. Complementing the fit are these tips. The tips that it comes with are actually kind of nice. They're a little bit nicer than some of the tips I've been getting with even like more expensive in-ear monitors. I think the tips that Final provides are pretty good. Like they make a really good seal in my ear. They come in various sizes, so they should work in your ears as well. Um, and then they also just, I don't know, they seem to preserve the bass really well and not keep a nice punchy treble. I tried these tips on some other inner monitors that I've got and I don't, I can't say they made the sound sound super better, but like they're some of the best tips that I have. One interesting thing about the design of the final E2000 is this mesh grill that they have on the back of the driver units. And I wasn't sure if that was just like an aesthetic choice or if it actually plays into the sound. So during my listening test, I, I plugged them up a little bit with my fingers and it does change the sound a little bit. Um, on Final's website, they say that the mesh allows the, the headphone to get like a deeper bass. And maybe that's true, but really what I found that it affected was just the sensation of space. When I plugged up the meshes, the, the effect on the sound was fairly mild, frankly, like it was fairly mild, but really when I released it, just felt the sound getting a little bit more open. So um, it is nice that, that I like the mesh the aesthetic of it, okay? But it's nice that it's actually playing a part in the sound. 
and giving these a quality that frankly I don't I don't hear in a lot of in-ear monitors like this, right? The I think the sound stage and like the space on these definitely not the same that you're going to get on like an open back headphone, but as far as in-ear monitors go, it's pretty good. I did get a chance to compare the E2000s directly back to back with a pair of Zero Carbo Tenores, which if you haven't heard of them, you should check them out. It's a really interesting headphone. I think very similar to this at least in terms of what it's doing, um, uh, in, at least in terms of like form factor and like what it's trying to be, right? A, a relatively inexpensive, simple, single driver cylinder that you plug into your ear. In terms of sound quality, the Zero, I think is a little bit more energetic, a little bit more forward and like the upper mids and the highs are a little bit sparkly. The bass on these is a little bit stronger, but they're both like pretty strong bass. Um, if I had to choose between them, uh, it's maybe a little superficial, but I'd probably go with the finals just because I like the look of the final better. I like the metal housings versus the plastic, or maybe they're carbon fiber, but I don't really like the plastic housings on the Carbo Tenores. So the finals, they get my vote. That said, like both of them are really good, and both of them, frankly, I think beat KZ's. So yeah, the final E2000, I think this is a pretty excellent in ear monitor for around 45 bucks if you can get over the fact that you can't replace the cable. In fact, if I were to score the final E2000 out of five stars, it's a pretty easy five stars for me, frankly, all right? For 45 bucks, you get really good sound, incredible fit. Like these are the best fitting. These are like in-ear monitors I wanna sleep in. Um, you get really good sound. You get an interesting sound signature. You get a good form factor. Yeah, 45 bucks, five stars, no question. If you're interested in checking out the final E2000s on Amazon, of course, I got links in the description down below. While you're down there, you can hit the like button for the video. If you like the video, you can subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you in the next super review.